Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on our Deadpool Funko Pop character. In this session I'll be UV unwrapping, I'll be showing you the fast way and quick way of doing it and the longer, more accurate way. Do remember to check out the links in the description for other useful playlists from my channel and the links to my character course which takes you from nothing right through to a game ready character with rigging animation ready for a game engine. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time and we need to unwrap our character ready for painting. If you don't know much about unwrapping, then look at my playlist in the description and that will take you through what unwrapping is. Now you can do this the really quick way. You can select all your objects, go into edit mode, select all with A and then U, Smart UV Project. I'll do that now and you can see what it looks like. Always turn your island margin up slightly to 0.03 to be safe. That way when you're texture painting, you won't have any issues. Press OK. And to see our UV unwrap, we can go to UV editing and it's all unwrapped over here. So that's flattened out our 3D object into this 2D space here. Now, one thing that I did forget to do was to make sure that my scale was set to one. Big issues here, but there may be. So I'm just going to go out of edit mode, into object mode, with everything selected, press Control A and scale. I'll just press full stop so we get a good view of our character. So let's do that again into edit mode with everything selected, U to unwrap, smart UV project. And let's see if our UVs change at all when I press OK. Now, yes, they have. So that's the importance of making sure that your scale is set to one, because I think it was the eyes that weren't, and they were really big in our texture space. So they were unnecessarily taking up lots of space on our texture and therefore not giving enough room to other areas. So when we start painting, one area might be more pixelated and one area might be nice and sharp. OK, so that's the really simple, quick way of doing it. Now, we've got one other issue we might come across. This is a mirrored object all the way down, apart from a couple of items like the gun belt, I think. But pretty much everything on here is mirrored. Now, if you want a texture, on one side but not on the other, then you'll have to make sure that you don't have a mirrored object and you'll have to apply all your mirrors. So at the moment, if I paint a scar on Deadpool down here, the scar will appear on the other side because this side is sharing the UVs of this side. However, if I apply the mirror and unwrap, then it will give me a UV unwrap for the whole face and I can then draw a scar down here and it won't appear on the other side. Now there are some advantages to this. You can use smaller texture sizes. So if this is going into a game, it could be advantageous to unwrap with a mirror so that you only need half the texture space. But you do have limitations when it comes to things like painting a scar on or anything that's asymmetrical. OK, so I'm going to apply the mirror for the different objects into object mode, into the modifier tab and apply the mirror. So I'll go through my objects and apply the mirror for each of them. You might get a warning saying it wasn't first. And generally speaking, your mirror ought to be first, but it doesn't matter in this case because the objects aren't joined. OK, so let's just quickly go through, making sure that our objects haven't got any mirrors on them. And the last thing is the eyes. Now, I haven't made the eyelids yet, but I'm going to leave that just to show you how you can add to your UV map later on and make any edits if you need to. So I'll apply the mirror to these eyes and now we're all ready to be unwrapped. So let's select all into edit mode, select everything again with A and U to unwrap smart UV project. Again, keep the island at 0.03 and press OK. Now we've got a lot more UVs. We've got pretty much twice as many, but it's still not doing such a bad job. Let's just quickly go in. And it is a good idea to check that you have got space between your UV islands. And these things are the islands, so these connected pieces. And there's not a lot of space in some areas. That's the frustrating thing about the Smart UV Project. Sometimes it doesn't actually give you the right island margin. It seems to be a bit of a bug. You might actually want to put it up to 0.06 just to be absolutely sure, especially if you're not too worried about texture sizes. And this isn't such a bad job. So that's one way of unwrapping. Now the longer way and more precise way is to go around your object and mark some seams. So I'll come out of edit mode for the moment and go into just the head model and into edit mode. Now this has done a pretty good job really, but, but I'll show you how you can unwrap a mod like this so you get nice big islands. Bigger islands are slightly preferable because you have sort of less wasted space in between and you're less likely to get any glitches where they're close to each other and almost touching. It's much easier to sort these sort of things out when you've got bigger islands. So into edge mode, select an edge loop, this one along here, this one along here, down here. And I'm just unwrapping this like it's a cube. I'm going along here and down here. So we'll have this big section around here and this big section at the top. So I can then press Control E and mark seams. Control E is the edge menu. So you can find this up here as well. And there's mark seams there. 
You can also right click, I believe, yep, and mark seams there. So there's three ways of marking seams. Okay, now if I select all these and press U to unwrap, we can see what that's going to look like. And we've got these big UV islands like this. So this is a bit nicer because I can then move these around into position. Maybe I want a bit more detail on the head than I do on the body, so I can resize these accordingly. It's a good idea to go through your objects methodically, so perhaps the top down, so do the eyes second. It's okay, but we can make it a lot simpler for ourselves just by doing an unwrap around the middle like this. You to unwrap and unwrap, and that gives us two nice big circles like that. Obviously the other one isn't unwrapped. The reason it's taking up all my texture space is because I've not got them all selected when unwrapping. So I'll actually redo this unwrap once I've marked the seams for every single object. More about that later. Let's just quickly do the other eye. So Alt left click on that edge loop there, Control E mark seams, select them both, U to unwrap and unwrap. Now we've got four islands there. At the moment I'm not too worried about the margins because I'll be unwrapping them all again later on with them all selected so that they fill this texture area. Then we'll only need one texture for the whole object. Okay, so let's get the body now. Let's click on the body, into object mode, click on the body, into edit mode. And you can see this is quite a messy unwrap. So this will be helpful to mark some seams. First thing I think is the obvious place for seams are going to be around here. So where you would naturally get seams, generally speaking, on a jumper or t-shirt, sweater, whatever you might call them. So control E, mark seams. A good place for a seam as well is going to be around the middle here because we can't see it at all. So I've actually selected around there and you can only just see it there. So control E, mark seams, separating the top from the bottom, separate the boots out. So around here, again, that seems like a natural spot. Control E, mark seams and up and around the middle of our shape here. It's going all the way around. That's okay, but we probably don't need it down the bottom here. So I can press C to circle select and middle mouse button to get rid of those. I'll do the feet in a different way. Okay, Control E, mark seams. And then there's usually a seam down the jumper here. And that's a fairly good space to have it. Control E, mark seams. One around the wrist. Now, what I stupidly done whilst I'm marking these seams is I applied the mirror before marking the seams. I should have marked the seams first because they're gonna be symmetrical either side. It's not gonna slow me down too much on this model because it's not too complicated. However, we could quickly do an auto mirror under the edit menu mirror, auto mirror in the x-axis to bring the mirror back. That does bring it under the subdivision surface modifier, so I'll just move it above. And now we can start marking the seams and they'll repeat on the other side. I'll just repeat this seam going around here for this hand. I'll go into isolation mode so we can easily see it. Control E mark seam. And I'm gonna clear this seam going up here because we don't need those at the moment. Control E clear seam. And with the hand, I'm just gonna cut it in half. So from here, control click, around. So I'm just going around the object with control left click and that takes the shortest route to the next edge up to the end there. Control E mark seams. Okay I'm not sure how that's going to work out but we'll soon find out and I've just seen an error. I'm just going to tidy that up. So I'll go into vertex mode for that and just edge slide that across. They look like they're just not joined together. Seems to be something slightly wrong here when I did the auto mirror. So I'll delete those extra faces and we're fine now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unwrap it and then do a live unwrap. So select all, U to unwrap, and tick the live unwrap this time. The strange thing is you have to press U to unwrap and then unwrap again, and you have to do your first unwrap. Put the margin at 0 0.06 again. Okay, so this is kind of working at the moment and the hands look like they're doing all right. We've got a few tools to help us with the unwrap to see whether it's working properly or not. If I press N on my tool panel and go to view, overlays and there's a stretching option here. So if I tick on stretching, you can see that there's some issues, especially with this bit. And I know that because anything that isn't dark blue has a bit of stretching. If you get anything that's sort of greeny colored, then that might be a problem. And light blue, you can kind of get away with. Now, if we want to find out where that bit is, we can use the UV sync selection button here. And then I can select this area and it tells me where that is on my model. And the shoes I hadn't completed unwrapping. They're a little bit more complicated, but I think Round the sole will make sense. Control E mark seams, and then it will automatically update so we can see what that's now looking like. And it's looking a bit better, so that's the sole, but then the top of the foot still has problems. We need to somehow sort of cut it up because it's squashed like a Coke can at the moment. There's the top and there's the bottom. We want it in a longer line. So if I come down here, let's say, Control E mark seams, and then you can see it's done it down here and it's looking a bit better. 
it's not amazing. So I think we can do a cut down here and a cut down here, and then it's unwrapping a bit more like a box now. Control E mark seams. Okay, and you can see that there's that bit sticking out there. So we're certainly getting there with this unwrap, not too much stretching. You can check as well, not just angle, but area as well. And we've got a few issues here, and we've got a big issue here, and that's the bottom of the hand. So, so there's a bit too much stretching going on. So a good way to sort this out is to just make some seams in these areas. Again, like you're splaying out the hand into a sort of flat surface, if you come into these areas, that will do just that. It's hard to describe really, but if I press Control E mark seams now, you can see that area there. Oh, now it's a big mess now. There's probably a seam missing somewhere. Yes, there is. And it seems to be here. Oh, that's a bit of a weird seam. Control E, clear seam, and Control E, mark seam. That makes it a bit better, but it is all over the place still. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll separate each finger out. So I'll select that one and that one there to select the thumb. Control E, mark seam, and now it's separated the thumb out. And I'll do that one and that one, Control E, mark seam, just so the thumb isn't stretched in any way. Okay, and then each of the fingers, so we'll go across here, up the edge there, missed that one, and there for the fingers. That should be fine on its own, so Control E, mark seam, and let's have a look. Have we got any more stretching? That seems to be okay now, it's not too much. Okay, we seem to have a problem here though, and that's the back of the leg, so let's full stop on my numpad to zoom in on that area. And yeah, it does sort of stretch around the corner a bit, a bit here, doesn't it? That's not too bad, let's just check the angle. The angle's not showing too much, but it's not great unwrap. So we might just have to sort of cut it in half down here, perhaps, Control E, Mark Seam. And then we've got much less stretching around here. Let's just select this one. That's the front, of course, so similar problems with the front. So I can select from here to here and Control E, Mark Seam. Okay, it's looking a bit better now. What's this area here? And that's gonna be up the top here. So we can just separate this out, Control E, Mark Seam. Okay, so it's looking a lot better. Let's just check these areas and make sure there's nothing hugely wrong with them. That's not too bad, to be honest. That's not gonna make too much difference. So there's an unwrap of our character, and we can possibly do without this one down here, let's say, Control E, Clear Seam. And I'm probably being a bit pedantic because, to be honest, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference when you're texture painting. This would make much more difference if we were, let's say, had a camouflage texture that we were applying onto here, and we were placing it in the background of our UVs here. That would make a bigger difference to where the seams are. And you'd have to take much more attention because these visible seams would become much more obvious. Okay, so that's fine for now, and that will do a job. Out of isolation mode, out of edit mode, and let's think about the other objects. I can apply my mirror now as well. So that will then, when I unwrap it eventually, it will give us everything unwrapped, but you can see that my seams are now in the right place still. So objects like this, if I go into edit mode, select all, U to smart UV project, and press okay. It's cut every single edge up, so I think we'll manually unwrap it. So let's go around and select a few edges. Nice, simple unwrap. Full stop to zoom in on that area. That one there as well. So now that should create two halves. Control E, mark seams. And that's worked for that side. We just need to do the other side now as well. I should have done the mirror again, really. Control E, mark seams. And now we've got two, that's great. There is one edge missing. Can you see how these are joined together? So I need to select that one, mark seams. That makes sense, doesn't it? So we've got four different patches from that model. Okay, I think this one is the same as this one. I am just going to Alt-A to deselect all, L to select that one and delete it, and then just do a mirror. So it mirrors across the other side, selecting Deadpool as the mirror object, and then come around here. Go into isolation mode to make it a bit easier. Control-E, mark scene. Okay, so they're right on top of each other because they're mirrored, of course. Now when I go to object mode and apply my mirror into edit mode, Select all, unwrap again. We can see that they're now separate objects. Okay, so here's just the time lapse of me doing an unwrap. The belt buckle at the front treated as a cylinder, so you have the front and the back as two separate circles that you unwrap, and then a cut down the middle of the middle section. 
The gun strap has a simple hole in it, so you can see how I'm cutting it up here, and I might put a gun in there eventually, we'll see how I get on. For these you might as well choose the inside edge, not that it's really going to be visible anyway. Now you might want to apply the solidify modifier for these straps, but they're all going to be one colour for me, so I don't need to have this inside edge as any different colour, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'm just going to mark a seam around here, and the same on this one, mark a seam around here. Now you can see these are wavy lines, a bit of a pain that. There's a couple of ways around this. If you've got a quad that's fairly flat and straight, which these aren't really, you can select them all, select one last and press U to unwrap and follow active quads. That will try and follow the direction of this. It, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, you can mess around with this and press OK, but you can sort of see there's a bit of stretching going on. It does sort of even it out a bit. The other way, if I undo that, is just to select the edge line here and then press scale X0. The next one, scale X0. And we might just have to adapt it really slightly by scaling it up a bit. And we're roughly there. It does help to even these things out if you're trying to be a bit more precise about your unwrap because one, it's much easier to put a texture in the background, and two, it's much easier to sort of pack your islands in, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Last ones, I think, are up here. Okay, so we need to unwrap all these together. Let's go out of edit mode, select all, into edit mode, select all, and you to unwrap. Now, remember I made those edits to this one down here, so we probably want to Deselect that one with Shift L for linked objects and Shift L for that one there as well. So they don't unwrap with all this. Or you can just redo the edits, it doesn't matter too much. Press U to unwrap and then unwrap. Okay, so it's worked. We've got a big margin here. You can see the islands are quite spread out. I'm going to press N to get rid of this panel here so I can zoom in a bit more. And there's those two that we edited ourselves so we can resize those. I'll bring down the margin a little bit, I think. Let's try point three. Okay, we're getting there a bit more. We can go a bit lower than that, I think. Let's put point two. That's all good. Okay, so we need to select this one here, which is actually a bit tricky because we haven't got the island option here. We can come out of this UV sync select and then select all in our window. And now I can go to the island option here and then select that island there. Now I can scale it down and find a useful place for it. I'll just move it to the side for now. Let's find something similar so we know what a good size will be. So this object here, I press L. We can see that it's quite a small size there. So let's select everything again and try and get them down to that size. Somewhere around there. And let's move them into an empty position. R90. And I can move them up the top here. OK, so there we have a full unwrap of our character. Might have been a long-winded explanation but I'm trying to sort of cover all angles for people so you can learn something whilst you're going along with this. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.